you know, there's remote places that are, you know, I'm about to go yeah. to go to Costa Rica, for example. There's plenty of places that don't want paved roads. Is, do you see, see a future where people are just going to be able to move things via satellite into position and just provide internet to entire populations and communities? It could be that low atmosphere satellite link and mesh network. Um, but I also see, and it's interesting, you're going to Costa Rica. I, I went to Costa Rica probably 15 years ago. And I had the best coverage hiking in the jungle in Costa Rica than I've ever had anywhere else around the world. It was amazing. Now, they are doing that and did that. That was 15 years ago. They had a lot of towers. And um, so I think you can get it from towers. And just remember, low atmosphere, you still need to connect and downlink to a ground station somewhere. And that's usually that's a tower that then is, is processing and doing those handoffs across the waves. So just because it's up there and, you know, I think Starlink has proven they can get it up there. It is exactly what you just mentioned. It is getting it downlinked into a ground station that then it can traverse across so that that connectivity stays up with it. Um, so the uplink and downlink are really, really important um, aspects of this architecture and it being able to be really reliable and really resilient and and so that you can have more connectivity you'll have to tell me when you go to costa rica what your experience there is i was really impressed with how much connectivity i got and how much coverage they had and i think back to the government it is up to the government regulation to decide and make those decisions for their own gdp of what that looks like and how they want to build their own infrastructure out there costa rica had an amazing infrastructure and i think you know in, uh, the us is is definitely getting there europe is is getting there but there is a lot of regulatory loopholes and one of the advantages of looking at that is who already has a solid footprint of those ground station or of those real estate rights for those towers is really important. And Zeo, we're, we're lucky, we're fortunate that our founder and the vision was to really build out the footprint and gain all of those rights um, early in the days. Building new towers definitely comes with its own challenges. And like you said, speeding up permitting, hopefully we can digitize more and more of the regulatory side, no matter where we are. Yeah. So we can speed that up. But yeah, it is important what kind of footprint you have. Hey, thanks for watching. This segment is brought to us by Salesforce Platform. Visit salesforce.com slash newsletter to discover timely insights and useful tips tailored to your role. Subscribe to the channel and get more great IT and tech interviews with top industry leaders.